Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and we are going to talk a little bit today about something's kind of going around the reptile community and how we should feed things. We're talking about that. Before I do that, a couple things I do want to mention. Make sure and hit like, make sure and hit subscribe, and you're also going to notice that I'm not wearing my regular clothes. That's because today, well, you're going to see this after the fact, but when we film it, Today is the opening of the college basketball season, the official one, not the one where all the good teams play all the really crappy teams and beat up on the uh, local colleges like, you know, um, I hate to call anybody out here in Portia States and Pitt States uh, of the world who probably shouldn't be playing KU's and the K-States of the world um, or the Fort Hayes States. But you know what? Fort Hayes State kicked their ass not so long ago, so... Respect. But anyway, it's time for the actual season to start, and I'm excited to support my cats in the Jerome Tang era. I thought we would rock a little K-State basketball just for the day. Um, but what are we going to talk about? Well, as soon as you hit that like, subscribe, and all of that, we are going to talk about feeding your reptiles. And there's been this traditional line of thinking with snakes that you feed every week. I'll be honest, that's what we do. There has been some talk about feeding every other week. And I will share with you what I think is honestly probably the best way to feed snakes, but that is impossible to do at this size. That is based on something I read a long time ago. It just made a whole lot of sense when I read it, uh, and I did do that for a while and had great success with it, but it's not feasible here. I think you'll understand why. So I kind of made me some notes. We're going to talk about the differences in feeding every other week and feeding every week. There are some advantages and disadvantages to each one. Straight up, I'm going to tell you... Uh, you get to choose whatever you want to do. Either one's right or one's wrong. It's not really how I do this. I'm going to give you some things to think about so you can come to that decision and then tell you how I would do it if I chose to do every two weeks. First of all, uh, every two weeks is, well, and what I forgot. I'm going to go ahead and write it. I did write it. It's cool. It's cheaper, okay? If you're buying rats or if you're breeding rats, you're going to need less rats if you're feeding every other week. As a matter of fact, you're going to need like half the rats. So if you have 50 snakes and you're feeding 200 rats a month, you're now feeding 100 rats a month. Especially if you're buying rats, man, that's a huge savings. Even if you're breeding them though, you can actually breed less, meaning less food and less breeders. So it is much cheaper to feed every other week. That might be part of the reason why some people are switching. I don't know. Another thing is it takes less time. It is a lot of time for us to come here and feed every single week. Uh, you know, you have to dedicate an evening at least to do it or a day, depending on how your setup is. It is quite a bit. You're going to use less time if you're feeding every other week. Every other week is a lazy way to do things. It doesn't mean it's a bad way, uh, but it is certainly the less time consuming. Uh, Caleb also mentioned, hey, if you feed every other week, you got less cleaning. You know, that's not mean you check your animals left or less spot cleaning, but it's a simple math equation. Less food goes in, less poop comes out, right? So you have less poop because there's less eating. So you're not picking up near as much snake shit. Uh, so those are some certainly some advantages to feeding every week. But what about feeding weekly? Well, there's some advantages there, there too. One, I think it's easier to track. If you're feeding your snakes every week, you're seeing those snakes every week. You know when they're missing food. You know when they're not. You know, you're, you're, I shouldn't say you're seeing them. You should be seeing them every week regardless. But you're seeing them eat every week you're paying more attention. I think it is easier to track what's going on. Two, if you're breeding, I don't think you should feed babies every other week. I think it's too much of a gap to get a good growth in your babies. I think you need to be feeding your young ones weekly. Uh, a lot of people feed babies every five days. Uh, it's probably a great thing to do. It's really a pain in the ass on an operation this size. It's much easier just to feed weekly. But if you take those babies that, you know, one could argue five to seven days is the right feed window for, and you push it to 14, you're really cutting that down on them. Uh, I don't think babies should be fed every two weeks. That is one caveat. So it's just easier on a weekly feed schedule because you're doing the babies anyway. Two, it's more flexible if somebody misses. Let me explain that. So if you're feeding ball pythons, you're not going to have everybody eat every week, okay? It's not going to happen once you get up to quite a few snakes. It's just not feasible. So when you have a snake miss now, we're feeding every other week, uh, we can look and just feed it the next week. And then the next week. And if it misses a couple, you know, you have more time to figure out why because maybe it's hormonal, maybe it's seasonal, maybe it's humidity, maybe it's shed, maybe it's Maybelline, maybe it's whatever, okay? It could be all kinds of shit that are causing that snake to miss. 
But when you're feeding that every week, you get more opportunities to figure out, okay, what's going on with the snake? Oh, I figured it out. Let's get that snake back on food. So it's more flexible if a snake misses. If you're feeding every other week and a snake misses, it, it's missing a month, right? Because you fed it, you missed a week, you go to feed it, it misses. So that's one week, second week. You don't feed the third week. You're not feeding until the fourth week. That's a lot. It's a lot, guys. So um, it is much better, I think, on that front to feed weekly. More feed equals more growth, right? Now, theoretically, if you're feeding every two weeks, you're going to be using a little bit bigger meal. Some snakes aren't going to take a bigger meal. Some snakes will readily take a bigger meal. You know, there's the old charts. It's like uh, 10 to 15% of body weight, hips as big around as a snake, all those old things that are all good, good information out there. But I can tell you, we have snakes that just don't like big meals. They won't take them. We have some snakes I can feed 25% of body weight. That some bitch will eat it. Probably not the best idea. But typically, if you're feeding them more often, you're going to be able to put more size on that snake. It would be the thought process because you're going to get more opportunities to get more food in it. If you're going to every other week, you need to, it's more important even to make sure that the meals are taking are of an appropriate size. If you've got a snake that likes a mouse and you go to every other week feeding, guys, that ain't going to cut it, right? Um, so more feed equals more growth. One thing on that, though, more feed can also equal obesity. So if you're feeding every week, you do got to keep an eye on that. You don't want your snake getting fat. Uh, ball pythons are a heavy-bodied snake anyway. They're not they're not like blood python heavy-bodied, but they're not corn snakes, right? So kind of the way to look at that is it should be a little thicker in the middle, okay? You should have a little cushion for the push on them ball pythons. But if your ball python is laying like this and you get where that curve is on the inside, rolly bumps, it's fat. If it's smooth, it's good. I don't look at how big around my snake is. Oh, you're too big around. I look at how that looks when that snake's moving. If it's going blip, 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 you're fat. If it's whoop, you're good. Pretty simple. Uh, but do watch obesity feeding every week. I think it's also easier to catch feed issues if you feed every week. I mean, when you get, when you have one or two snakes, you know everything going on with those things, man. Because you're picking them up, you're fucking with them every day, you're playing with them, you know, you're being a good snake keeper. When you got 170 of them in here, plus 250 babies, plus a bunch of the murderous, you know, venomous killers in your feeding, when you feed is one of the times that you really pay attention. If that snake didn't eat, you're like, man, this snake hadn't eaten in a couple weeks, you start really wondering why. That's when you're going to find things that may be wrong. You're going to catch issues much more frequently than you might if you're feeding every other week. So I think it's good because you're getting more than inspection time on those snakes. Which, to be honest, guys, uh, that's one of the bad things about breeding, right? When I only had a handful of snakes, I spent all day with them, man. I'd take them out. I'd play with them. They're my buddies. You get here now, man. It's like, I come here. I don't have time for that shit. So I take one out and I fuck with it for 45 minutes. That's 45 minutes of other things I didn't get to do. So this is a chance to get some uh, good time with it. So what's best? Well... We do one week right now. Um, I do one week for all the reasons listed above. But if we were going to go to every other week, I think you have to mitigate some of the negatives. And I think you can do it. I think you can mitigate those negatives. You'll also mitigate some of the positives or less than some of the positives. Uh, let me explain. I think if we were going to go to every other week, we'd go to like a hybrid situation. I wouldn't say, okay, guys, we now only feed on the second Thursday of the month you know, and the fourth Thursday. We don't feed the first or the, the I, I wouldn't do that. You know, hey, we only feed on paydays, you know, we get paid every two weeks. I, mean, I, I wouldn't do that. Uh, we would still be here once a week to feed. The reason for that is we would take this room, well, one, we feed the babies every week. Like I said, it takes, it, it's not enough food to do it weekly on them. You want to be feeding them every week. You want to catch those issues super fast. Those babies, they're going to get weekly fed no matter what. So what we would then do is we would take this room and we would cut it in half. We may say, okay, one week is uh, like this wall behind me and the other week's the rest. And that way we would be able to come through and feed. Well, if somebody didn't need or there was an issue, we would mark that snake and try it the following week. Try to get it back on, right? So we would be catching those issues. Uh, we would be seeing those snakes all the time. We wouldn't have animals going, oh, well, we missed. Or if we had a show or... You know, life happens too. Like, you know, our feed night is this day, but sometimes Kurt may have something come up or I may have something come up. Or like this week, you know, I was out of state. Kurt had shit going on. 
we weren't going to feed this week. Every now and then we will skip a week. It's no big deal. Caleb was going to take care of a lot of it. He had something come up. Like, it just didn't work. Well, we only missed one week. We didn't miss a month. So if we missed a week because life happened, we would feed everything the next week and then get back on the two-week schedule. So we're never missing that month. I don't like that. Um, so if we did it, we would feed every week, but only half of them, unless we needed to feed all for a reason. It certainly would help wrap populations. It certainly helped some things. It is something that, honestly, we may consider in time. Uh, but right now, we're probably going to stick to the ones that we we've kind of talked about. It's where we like to be right now. So that's kind of where, where we are. Um, we'll kind of, in Patreon, talk about why we chose once a week, what, what point we would go to every other week, where that tipping point is for us, and where maybe it could be for you. Uh, or, if not for you, at least give you some ideas to think about, hey, maybe this is when we look at making that switch, or when I should consider making that switch. Uh, so that's kind of where that's at. All right. Caleb, any questions? Anything I left out? Nope. What's your preferred method right now? Right now? Uh, probably how, like what you just talked about, the hybrid. Like, that would probably be ideal. That would be your preferred right now. You do the hybrid right now. Yeah. Okay. Kurt, what's your favorite right now? Um, I think once a week. I I like that one. It's It's a pretty, like, routine schedule. Like, everything else you do is usually once a week. Like showering. Yeah, once a week, once a month. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, all right, guys, that's all we got. Let us know in the comments how you feed your snakes. Do you feed them once a week, every other week, once a month? Oh, one thing I told you I would tell you. I forgot. I hope you watched till the end. I was going to tell you the actual method that I prefer the most, which is impossible to do in this situation. And it was based off when I had my boa constrictor, and uh, I was a young man, and I did a lot of reading. I was kind of a nerd at times about that animal and one of the things i read uh was a study that was based on animals it was a study done with controls it was an actually a good legit study focusing on the health the fat content uh the well-being of the animal everything else and what they had done and this is something you can do if you have a couple snakes man and maybe you should and the study was specific to boas when it was done but it should apply across the board the idea, the question that was being answered, or the thought process that was trying to be proven or disproven was, hey, we feed these snakes on a weekly basis, even back then. So the weekly feeding stretches all the way back to when we first started repticulture on snakes. Probably because just what Kurt said, it fits a nice schedule. Like, it just does. Um, the theory was, that's not how it goes in the wild. You know, they don't eat on a set schedule. They don't eat on every week or every other week or once a month or any of that shit. That's not how it's done. So the idea was to take and feed the snake in a chaotic manner, right? And with chaotic sizes. Maybe not the exact size food every time, but always still appropriate. Maybe on the large side appropriate, the smaller side appropriate. And feed it chaotically. Like maybe in one week, maybe I feed it on a Monday. And I turn around and I feed it on Sunday or on Saturday or even on Friday. Four, four days apart, I think, was a minimum recommended. And sometimes maybe it goes six weeks. You know, and it, it, it sporadically is in there. The idea being you still want to get as much food into that animal in a year's time as you would normally, which with the boa, I think I was feeding that thing uh, like once every two weeks at the time, a large rat. So you're still wanting to get, you know, that same amount of food in it throughout the year, but you're wanting to be in a more sporadic, chaotic schedule. And that more sporadic, chaotic schedule, the idea was that would more closely mimic what that snake would actually see in the wild and which would more mimic wild behavior and would more mimic natural behavior, uh, which also in the body then is going to mimic that snake would have to go through periods of a little bit of a fast and periods of gluttony, which is what it would do as an opportunistic feeder in the wild, right? And they found that over time, when they tested that with control, that those snakes fed in that chaotic manner, but still controlling the amount of food coming in, were healthier. They were of a healthier size, healthier muscle content, they were overall a healthier animal. So if you keep just one or two snakes, you know, and you're going to do every two weeks, my suggestion would be sometimes do three, sometimes do every. Uh, vary it. Get that same amount of food in there, but be a sporadic. An operation like this, that is damn near impossible because you have just too many animals to really truly track that well and make sure you're doing a good job of that. But when you have a boa or two or three snakes, very doable. 
uh, and it was pretty fun. And I had a very, very healthy boa. When we got rid of that boa, he was old. He didn't look old. He still looked young. He was still very vibrant. He was still healthy. He actually went to a facility because I just wasn't able to, uh, well, my ex-wife didn't want me to keep him anymore. She wasn't the ex. I shouldn't say my wife at the time. Um, cause if my ex-wife told me not to keep snakes now, I would, once I was finished laughing, I would just hang up the phone and I'd call her back to laugh some more and then hang up again because where the fuck ex thinks I can tell him what to do. Uh, but at the time she was a wife, so I did listen a little bit, but they were actually super impressed with the health of the animal and how everything looked. It was just great because of that. That was a big part of it. So Curtin, you want to add? Nope. Kilding, you want to add? Nope. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See y'all next time.